Hi, uh, hello. Hi, Uchi san. Ah, hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, long time to see. How are you? Yeah, fine. I hope you and your friend are all happy. Yeah, uh, uh, our team is happy. Uh, now we are getting better and better for uh, uh, remote work. <laughs> Before that, mm -hmm. we we cannot the remote work, but now we we like uh, <laughs> remote work and uh, <laughs> we don't want to go to office. <laughs> uh -huh. You you are working from home. Yes, home. Oh, are you in office? Yes. Oh. I'm working. I was working from home for two months in March and in April, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. from May we started work in the office again. Oh, I see. Yeah, our office also open, but. Uh, 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 our company says that ten percent people can um, can go to uh, the office and uh, keep keep remote work. And uh, um, mm -hmm. if we have a good productivity uh, in such a way, uh, please keep the telework. Mm -hmm. hmm. That is our company's policy. Mm -hmm. okay. mm. I remember that when I walked from home, I feel um, some isolation. Uh, yes. I mean? Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, I, I feel so that very isolation and a very, uh, very big stress to right. in the me, me, uh, mental mentality. And uh, so uh, it is a hard work. <laughs> and I, I, I think uh, we can reach uh, some high, higher productivity. <laughs> right. Yeah. Any any various chain. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, how about your uh, companies? I, is it a normal normal uh, working time? Mm. No, we we our policy is that we the thing the thing we only have to do is working forty hours in a week. Mm. Oh, so there's no regular, no more working time. Mm -hmm. I can work in the very early morning or I can work in the very late mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. The thing is that we just work in over 40 night, 40 hours oh, yeah. a week. Okay. That's the only policy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, for the open source people, the, uh, if we cannot meet in person, it is very hard to build uh, some trust between the people. So it, it, it is uh, our next challenge, how to overcome this situation. Yeah. Let's discuss today how to overcome this <laughs> yes. situation. <laughs> yes. It is a very uh, joyful uh, time <laughs> for me. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. How are things going? So uh, in Japan, our lockdown is kind of over. How's it going in Korea and Taiwan? Aksang, are you back to normal life? Um, of course not, of course not. But I started 
to go to the office again from from May, but not every day. We go. We should work from home um, once or twice a week. But today I go to the office, and um, I want to go back to my life before the COVID nineteen. But I don't think it's easy. Yeah, in many companies here also, the structure of work has changed. People are working from home half time and so on. Yeah. Uh, SC, how about in Taiwan? Are you also doing more remote work and so on? Not anymore. We have to go to the office uh, since May. Oh, wow. Oh. Because we don't have any, uh, you know, um, COVID-19 cases, so <laughs> everything back to normal. Wow, no cases, so it's totally clear. That's, yeah. that's incredible. Amazing. I think, you know, in, in Tokyo a, a day or two ago, there was like 50 cases. We still, we still have a lot. Wow. Yeah, please take care. Yeah. Harry, good, good morning. Good to see you today. So uh, today is kind of a, a talk. Hi, Jerry. How are things going in uh, Beijing? Uh, it's a little dangerous for somebody. <laughs> yeah. But the peoples are calm. That's and, good. Uh, yeah. Um, citizens uh, have confidence about their government. So some people just work as normal. Some people stay at home. Right. Yeah, because of course you had the, uh, the new cases in Beijing. Yeah. Uh, Right. Fingers crossed, but uh, you know, it seems like the basic structure to contain this is uh, exists uh, in in Beijing, and the activity seems to be working to contain it. So, fingers crossed. All righty. So we have about. Uh, 10 people on the line right now, and we'll probably have some more join in the next few minutes. Uh, we're recording this session, so this will be, as usual with our webinars, something that people will be able to access over the, the months and the years ahead. Uh, so we're going to talk through a little bit for basically China, Japan, Korea. Uh, a little bit about how the communities worked. Um, how about we go through in the order of CJK? Is that okay for you guys? China, Japan, Korea, same as the summits? Yeah, it's okay. All right. <laughs> so, um, Jerry, let's, let's kick off with some of your perspective. And I think what will be interesting with today's recording is that it'll be the first time that our international community will have had a chance to get a quick overview of all three activities. Um, so just, just to get started, um, so on the China side, Jerry, yeah. uh, how, how did the China work group bring companies together? Did it change the way that companies interact in compliance, or was it part of a general larger cooperation? Um, let me introduce how the China Work Group are organized. Sounds great. Uh, first, thanks for Shen and the kids from the OIN team. Uh, they organized several events to invite uh, um, bigger companies uh, 
uh, lawyers and uh, engineers to participate. They are all con interested in about uh, license compliance. So we are grouped together and uh, we exchange news, especially she tell us the open chain will become an international standard. And uh, we invite some groups, some companies such as Xiaomi and Oppo and Vivo. We organize together to discuss how to practice compliance. Uh, compliance. So it's totally thanks for Shane's effort to build up this team. Also, uh, there are actual needs for China companies to concern about uh, uh, compliance issues. So we all, all grouped together and uh, discussed. So the team, the China working group was organized. And uh, also I participated with my uh, teammates to translate the specification into a simplified Chinese version. Uh, we are reviewed by Lean, stands for Lean. So we have some basic documents to refer. Uh, is it yeah. okay? No, that's great, but don't give me too much credit. <laughs> it was, you know, one thing that was surprising um, was that when we set up the WeChat for the China work group, so many people went on to it. We ended up with a total of right now 109 people on the WeChat. Uh, that was unexpectedly quick. It seems that people from company to company uh, encouraged people to join. And, and that, that was great. Is, is that uh, normal to see that kind of growth from zero to 100 uh, so quickly on things like a shared WeChat? I think uh, some uh, members uh, have uh, joined the WeChat group with just based on their own interest. They want to learn, they want to come share, they want to uh, grow their reputations. But some companies, some members uh, uh, join this group based on their needs from their company. They want to know what is going on for this international standard? It certainly was interesting to have uh, some companies like the drone company DJI appear. I know that for DJI, they, um, they sent a patent lawyer, uh, first of all. And I, I think, you know, that makes a lot of sense in the drone market uh, because they're dealing with hardware and so on. But it was, it was just very interesting to have uh, that type of company very quickly engage. I, I wanted to talk about challenges. Have, have there been any problems with the remote working situation and energy in general? And I don't just mean the open chain community. I mean, for open source activities and China companies, uh, has the last six months slowed down people's work? Is it harder to communicate? Or has the transition to digital work smoothly for companies in China? You know, what is your perspective? For, for me, uh, I have the experience at a, a work at home because I have worked for some microsystem before. Um, but for some my teammates, they are not uh, quite familiar with remote work. But uh, things have changed, they have got to use it. I think the biggest problem is uh, uh, online, online meeting system. For example, we use Uber uh, meeting before, but it does not work well in China. So we switch to Zoom. It, must, it was much better. 
And then now we have also other tools such as Ding Ding from Alibaba and uh, and the Tencent meeting from Tencent. They are all, all very good to use. Certainly, it was very interesting the type of problem we had with Uber conference where it just cut in and out. Some people could enter, some people couldn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was hard. But Zoom seemed to work pretty well. So once we got to Zoom, it, things, things got a lot easier. Yes. But even so, uh, it's pretty annoying to have to keep installing a new program or something similar and set it up. Yes, okay. Here's, uh, here's kind of the, uh, the wrap up. What, what do you think the international open chain community could do to support the China community to help keep the energy and the discussion going? I think the problem is not uh, uh, China cannot be its own. We need to communicate. We need to uh, work with other working groups. So today's event is a great event because we have uh, speakers from Japan and speakers from Korea we share the same experience that will help us understand each other better and exchange our uh, practice. It will help us both. Thank you so much, Jerry. And uh, I mean, you've, you've been doing open source governance for many years now, I think, right? It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's great to have your experience, and you've been fantastic to support the community in Open Chain. You, uh, you came to the physical meetings, you brought people to digital meetings, so we, we owe you a lot, and thank you very much for taking the time to help Open Chain grow. It also helps me. I'm looking forward to next steps in China and working together on that. Um, okay, we can talk later. Yeah. So um, for those of you who are on the line and you're not uh, part of the China, Japan, Korea work groups, one interesting thing is that this week we have meetings for each of the countries in place. So we have an incredibly busy week. Uh, starting later today, uh, today is the Korea work group meeting. So it's, it's going to be a very busy day for us. Uh, in the Open Chain project. Alrighty, so we're doing this in order of China, Japan, Korea, because that's how it works with the summits, CJK. Uh, so we'll move on now to Fukuchi San. Uh, Fukuchi San, uh, you know, yeah. let's, let's cover a little bit of what happened in Japan. Uh, so the, the first question is, you know, how did, how did the activities bring the companies together? Did it change how the companies are talking in Japan or were the companies already sharing a lot about compliance? Uh, yeah, uh, the, this uh, open chain, open chain is a very good place for us to meet each other. So I thank to uh, open chain, the Linux foundation to make uh, this uh, opportunity. And uh, 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 we are very proud to start this kind of a regional community. Uh, at first, the, uh, there are three founders of this activity, uh, Hitachi, Toyota, and Sony. And uh, Hitachi people proposed this kind of uh, regional uh, activity. Uh, and uh, <laughs> At the beginning, I, I was uh, very uh, doubtful of it because the regional is a uh, regional and uh, we belong to a global community. But I realized this is a very valuable uh, activity. And uh, inside Japan, uh, we have many 
issues in uh, uh, supply chain uh, related issues, and uh, we cannot we cannot resolve this uh, supply chain issue by one company, and uh, we meet and we we need to collaborate each other. So the from this uh, from the start of this activity, we can meet and we can collaborate. We learn about the, how collaboration works and how we can get the outcomes from this uh, collaboration. Uh, that is uh, our uh, uh, good experience. It's an interesting point about the the regional versus global activity. Uh, you know, we, we had things like legal study group in Japan for quite a few years, but somehow it never, that, that study group activity never became connected with the global activity. It was much more passive. It was more like um, international update time. <laughs> and then everyone went home. So it was interesting to see how with the Open Chain Japan work group, it very much became, let's, let's build stuff and share it, and let's also make sure that international stuff is translated. And I, I guess that leads to the next question about, you know, how did, how did the Japan work group keep companies engaged? And perhaps uh, that's so doing stuff, maybe? Over to yeah, you. Th yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is a very good point, and uh, I think uh, we think we think uh, many things, and uh, uh, I, I I believe there are several points. One is that uh, we we could uh, build us uh, some coaching. Uh, the, we we have a, a special subgroup, uh, planning subgroup. Planning subgroup is uh, just to plan the next uh, all, all member meeting. But uh, in, in this uh, activity, we can keep the core active members involvement. So the many good uh, partners can join and they proposed many good things and we can discuss. So the first one is uh, we, we can have uh, some special group to meet and the core, we, we, can, we could build a core subgroup. That is a one point. And uh, we can go to the uh, go ahead uh, future. And uh, also the, uh, the old member meeting is, uh, we, I, I, I believe old member meeting is a very, very important for us because uh, me, meeting each other in person can make a uh, good trust between us and a good uh, trusted relationship. And a good trust relationship makes a, makes a good atmosphere to discuss each other in a honestly and a very actively. So the, and the, we keep our uh, all member meeting two months, every two months. So we, we always meet the, uh, in person uh, before the COVID-19. So this situation, we can build a good trust. And uh, this is, a, I, I think this is a special for uh, uh, Japan. So J Japan, Japanese company, are, Many companies are located on uh, uh, Tokyo area, so we can easy to meet each other. And uh, th this keeps us to active, I think. And uh, also we have uh, some uh, activity, uh, lightning talk, uh, we call it lightning talk. The, this is a case study to share the case study. At first, Panasonic people proposed this uh, uh, lightning talk and uh, we tried it. And uh, after that, we can, we can start 
uh, the uh, the sharing the honest uh, e uh, honest issues or uh, very good uh, not good best not the best practice but a real practice pra practice in real business so we can share what is a problem and what is a uh, re re resolvement and so we can discuss and very hardly so, so that the, these points are the, for us are the very big and the, uh, critical point and uh we, we go on to the, the dark side now. <laughs> you know, remote working, um, ha, has, has it been hard to keep the energy in the community with the change to remote working? Yeah, uh, so we entered uh, the remote working. So at first I could not Rid of this, but uh, uh, we we could keep the planning group, and uh, we can discuss about uh, how to do the next. And uh, so we decided to keep our uh, all member meeting in virtual. So we we can we could uh, hold. Uh, we could hold a, a, a virtual meeting, and uh, we had uh, over 80 people to join. And I, I, I was very surprised that so many people joined. And then we keep we keep our uh, virtual meeting be, uh, until the COVID-19 is stabilized. So we. We can meet, we cannot meet in person, but we can do our activity. Uh, we, we can keep the, our activity by virtual meeting. That is our, uh, the, uh, th this is very hard, but uh, this is our uh, resolution for that. And moving on to kind of our Final question is about what can the international community do to support the Japan, Japan community more effectively? Uh, yeah, uh, we want to collaborate with the uh, global community and the global community has many, many things and uh, we, we received many things from uh, Turing group and uh, specification group and uh, so, and uh, we can interact uh, with uh, China work group, uh, Korea work group, Taiwan work group. This is a very good uh, input and uh, stimulus for us. And we, we, uh, we can realize that our activity works, with, uh, grow, uh, works globally. So uh, this kind of uh, this kind of meeting is very good for us to meet and to discuss and to realize the other uh, international people do. And we can, we can propose and we can receive and we can discuss. So uh, please keep this kind of international, interregional and international meeting. Uh, there is, uh, I thank for uh, many people to, to this happen. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Kikuchi-san, much appreciated. Uh, moving on towards Korea, Haksan, uh, well, hi there. <laughs> um, so the, the first thing is about whether the Open Chain Korea work group, uh, bring, did it bring companies together? Were companies already talking about compliance? Uh, it, basically to understand, was it something that changed how the community works in Korea or built on the existing work? Okay, Shane, do you want 
long version answer or a short version of answer? Oh, surprise me. <laughs> both are both are great. Whatever okay. you think makes sense. Okay. Um, before I answer, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Hakson, working at SK Telecom as an open source program manager. SK Telecom is a wireless operator, telecommunication operator in Korea. In fact, I've been working for a long time in LG Electronics open source team. Then in January of this year, I moved to SK Telecom. And everyone knows that open source compliance is important. It's one of the essential for using open source software and Korean companies, of course, knows that the importance of the open source compliance but open source compliance cannot be achieved by one company alone, as Kuchi Sang mentioned. So I strongly believe that if companies share their resources and best practices with each other, then all companies can achieve significant level of open source compliance at low cost and low resources. The thing is that the open chain project very surprisingly make it possible to achieve open source compliance simply and consistently through sharing and collaboration. In 2017, I met Shane in Korea and Shane explained the idea of the open chain project and I, it was quite impressive. So since 2017, I've been contributing to the open chain project with Korean transmission of the specification. And in 2018, I attended the open chain Japan workroom meeting and I saw how Japanese companies are working together and it was so quite impressive. I wish that such activities would happen in Korea too. At that time, I had some personal connection, relationship with some people working on open source team in each Korean companies. And then I called them and explained the idea and purpose of the open chain project. Very thankfully, most of them agreed with the idea of the open chain project. So we decided to have a meeting um, under the open chain project and the LG Electronics, my former company, hosted the first meeting in January 2019, and then we have formed the Open Chain Korea Worker. That's it. So moving to the next uh, question, most kind of important one is how, how did you keep the companies, because uh, I think today's meeting is the sixth meeting of the Korea work group, if I remember correctly, at 2 p.m. Korea time. So how did you keep the company uh, attending? What was the secret? No secret, just three normal things. I'd like to mention three things, three points. First, it's because Korean companies recognize the importance of the open source compliance and the value of sharing and collaboration. Second, the open chain project continues to share many valuable resources such as specification, guides, and various compliance automation tools so that we, Korea Work Group, study together and share the value of them. So those resources are a big help for us to keep the Korean work group. And third, um, finally, the Open Chain Korean work group hold quarterly meeting. And as, as Shane mentioned, today there will be a sixth meeting. And every time when we meet, Korea's leading IST companies such as LG, Samsung, SK Telecom, Korea Telecom, Kakao, and Soft and Line um, share their 
best practices. Um, so despite of the COVID-19 pandemic, we are getting together online if today. Um, today, also Kakao will also introduce their new open source management system. In this way, like this, if companies voluntarily share their best practices, I believe that the Korea work group can continue to be kept. And uh, that brings us neatly to the question about has lockdown situation caused problems for the energy of the group? Has it been a challenge or has remote work been just fine? Um, of course, it's big, huge challenge. Of course, it's very difficult. As um, Fukuchi-san mentioned, um, in addition to sharing work and collaboration, I think we needed to meet and talk offline and have fun together to build friendships, relationships. As friendships build among members, I think community can grow. However, the fact that we can only meet online like this due to the COVID-19 is a huge challenge to the community's growth. Um, I'm thinking about how to overcome it and yeah, showing face using camera during online meeting is one way to increase friendship like this. But um, this cannot be a fundamental solution. And I'm not sure what we have to do exactly yet. Um, but somehow we must innovate to overcome these difficult situations. Um, I think we can learn from successful global open source communities such as Kubernetes, TensorFlow, and Linux. And I think such communities may be growing even more in this hard, difficult situation. The key here is that um, their content is the driving force behind them. I think creating high quality content that everyone needs is the most necessary part of community growth in this um, difficult situation. If we open chain project community continue to create um, valuable content, then anyone can easily stream streamline and automate the open source compliance activities. Um, our Open chain community also will con continue to grow, I think. A very good point about the content. Um, Open chain has had quite a bit of success with making reference material for training, automation, and so on. Sure. So, yeah. And that, that brings us neatly to it. Is there something or are there various things the international community can do? to help support the Korean community. Yeah, as I mentioned before today, it's very helpful to provide high quality resources through um, open chain regular meetings and this webinar. We, Open Chain Korean Work Group, try to translate these materials as possible and provide it to the, the Korean Work Group. This will help the Korean work group. And personally, um, I hope that some more detailed document will be provided to make it easier for anyone to use the open source automation tools introduced through the open chain or open chain tooling work group. Everyone knows that those open source automation tools are good, but the big barrier is that it's not easy to use them, you know. Um, so I think to, so, to resolve those difficulties, it is necessary, required to provide um, documentation detailing how to use, use it for even beginner. 
And one more thing I'd like to mention is that um, there are some members who voluntarily work for um, work group to grow the community. And I, as a lead of the Korea work group, want to reward them at the community level, not with money or not with any benefit. Just I want to um, recognize them and I want to um, encourage them. But in fact, there is, I don't, I have no idea. Um, there's no clear way for me. So I think it would be nice if the international community could consider, could think about this way together. That's a really good point. And uh, I, I, I think it might be time for us to create more open chain goodies to share. <laughs> so maybe that's something we should we should get done. Um, one thing that was interesting is that uh, some of our groups had a lot of fun making their local logos. So I know that our tooling group and so on, they had a lot of fun making a logo and, and sharing it. Maybe we, we should do a bit more of that. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Haksung. So with the overviews complete from China, Japan, and Korea, I just want to pause here and see if any of our guests online have any questions or comments uh, for our presenters. Hey, Shane, Dave, Dave Mark here. I just wanted to say, um, hey, uh, a plus one on the goodies. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's work on that. Yep. Consider it underway. Maybe we should have a... Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Uh, Shane, we'll... this is Russ. I had a, just a, a brief comment. Awesome. Go ahead. Um, so, I mean, to, to everyone, I guess, in the international community, if there's, if there's anything that uh, you feel might help from uh, as far as information or sharing or something like that, that you could benefit from, from... Uh, what we're seeing in North America, if there's some way we could help as well. I mean, I'm open to uh, helping out or listening to questions or something you might have. If there's any way we could help. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to, you don't have to answer right now, but just uh, the invitation is there. <laughs> And I suppose it also goes the other way, um, Russ, we've, we've talked a little bit about maybe having Open Chain North America work group. Uh, the idea had been originally to launch it at the Leader Summit or Membership Summit, as it's now called, in February, which obviously didn't happen. Uh, so maybe we can launch it as a virtual work group and perhaps also get some support from uh, Jerry and Gucci Sam and Haxan on, on that front. Sure. Sure. Uh, so, pausing again, uh, if anyone else has any comments or questions, now is the perfect time to jump in. So, Shane, one question. Uh, Jim, hey, go ahead. So, in uh, in North America, we have we have certain industries that have more interest in in supply chains, uh, particularly the you know the automotive industry is. Is definitely woken up and engaged very seriously. From the uh, from the Korea perspective, what uh, what industries do you see having the most attention to open chain? Okay, as you mentioned, um, automotive in industry is also quite big role in Korea. For example, Hyundai Motors is a member of our open chain Korea work group and they are uh, playing a big role for our uh, communities. And um, now, um, until two or three years ago, electronics um, industry are a big part of Korea, but nowadays ICT um, companies such as Kakao, Naver, or Line are also Mm, this kind of internet in industry is also a big 
move in Korea. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. I want to uh, mention that uh, open chain is not only compliance. It's about uh, how to manage your open source software supply chain efficient and security. So uh, you can uh, start your work uh, from compliance, but also there are some uh, efficiency and security issues. We can combine it together. But OpenChain gave us a framework to follow. We just need to fill in uh, that, that part and that part and that part and, and make it run as a whole. So um, I'm not from a hardware company. I'm from international service company. I'm from Baidu. Baidu is uh, uh, China's is Google. Yeah, uh, for me to complain to to join this uh, project is not because the compliance issues. The compliance issues are not very uh, critical for current business. But uh, I think OpenChain gave us a great framework to follow. So we combine, we need to uh, match our software, open source software usage inside our company. We just follow it. So what I mean is that OpenChain is not only compliance. It can be used in other companies such as IMT. That's a really good point. Uh, and, and you know, we, we have seen companies engage with open chain uh, as, as much for a general approach to dealing with suppliers as the license compliance itself. Perfect. Alrighty there. And uh, if we don't have any further questions or comments, uh, we'll wrap up here with a big thank you to Jerry, Fukuchi, san and Exa. And this, this particular set of presentations and this recording will hopefully provide a little bit of inspiration and also your faces to show a human side to our work um, as we set up new work groups. I know that later in the summertime, I believe in July, the Open Chain UK work group will start. And I'll hopefully be able to work with people like Russ and launch the Open Chain United States work group as well. So, what we've done today will provide some support and template for their work. And thank you so much for your time in creating this record. All right, everyone. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Most important, stay safe. Stay safe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Goodbye, all. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you.